One of the big lies that we've all been subjected to is we've been been told that you maybe even have bought into the idea that you're a writer. <laughs> no, you're a storyteller. There's a huge difference. It's, it's, it's night and day. There's journalism on one hand, there's storytelling on the other. Those two are in completely different universes. The journalist is, is in, involved in propaganda. He's trying to get you to believe something that you don't already believe. The storyteller, on the other hand, is trying to get you to understand something that you already believe. Let me say that again. The storyteller is trying to get you to understand something that you already believe. You already know to be true. You may not understand it, but you believe it. The journalist, on the other hand, is trying to get you to believe something you don't already believe. He's trying to sell a product like Wheaties. <coughs> or Tide. He's engaged in propaganda. But as a storyteller, you have an obligation. You have a duty. If you know how to tell stories, or you want to learn how to tell stories better, if you have some slight ability, you better use it, or you're going to lose it. And society needs lots more good stories, and the storytellers to tell them. Because you can change people's lives. Your stories will change people's lives. Whether you recognize it at the time or not, let me give you an example. When I was in the fourth grade, I couldn't read. I couldn't sound out, I couldn't sound out the words my teacher at the time, Mrs. Grainer. God, she saved my life. What a wonderful woman. Oh, she's in her late 60s, early 70s. She caught me one day. She figured out. She realized, oh, my goodness, this, this kid can't read. He can't read Dick and Jane. It's a story of how she caught me, but she figured it out. She figured out that I couldn't, I couldn't even, I didn't know the sounds of the letters. I couldn't sound out a, a word. Just saved my life. Truth is, I couldn't see the goddamn blackboard. There was a there was a chart up above the blackboard that had each of the letters up there, and it kind of indicated the the sound that they made. I I couldn't had no clue. She took me up to the front, and she was pointing out these letters. And well, what is that? What is that? I I, I don't know. <laughs> She got mad. Oh, she got mad. And I started crying because I, um, I started crying. She's a big woman. She reached over, wrapped me in her arms, and she said, it's not your fault, Richard. It's not your fault. Don't you worry. We're going to fix this. And she did. She got my mother to come in for a parent-teacher conference, which wasn't easy because my mom worked down in the valley. It was like an hour drive to work and back every day. So my mom must have come in, you know, after work. Sat down with her. Jesse, okay, this is what we're going to do. You're going to enroll Richard in a book of the month club. You're going to let him pick any book that he wants to and... You're going to have him read it to you out loud. You're going to tell him any word that he doesn't understand, that he doesn't know how to say. 
Oh, God bless my mom. So she did enroll me in a book of the month club. Okay. And and Mrs. Griner stipulated very specifically, you let him pick any book that he wants. <laughs> uh, so I picked Geronimo. That was the first book I ever read. I still remember that book. Geronimo is this fantastic Apache warrior. These Apaches could run a hundred miles in a day. From childhood, they learned how to do without water and run. They would put a rock in their mouth and they would run 20 miles. And then at the end of those 20 miles, they had to spit that rock out. Yeah, good, good job. The cavalry chased them all over the southwest for years. They could never catch Geronimo. He had a small band of warriors with him. And they'd camp someplace, and Geronimo would go out away from the other guys, and he'd sit out there by himself, and he'd listen, not with his ears, but with his mind. He'd listen to the trees and the cactus and the sand around him, and they would talk to him and he'd go, Calvary's coming, it's time to leave. And they'd take off. Two days later, the Calvary would show up and they, they weren't there. Anyway, Mrs. Griner saved my life because she taught me how to read and it opened it opened the whole universe for me, the world for me. From there, I read Poe and Steinbeck and Jack London. I just tore through books like a mad hatter. I could, I could access the world. And that's what your stories have the capability to do change someone's life. They will invariably change lives. But it's, a, it's an ability that you have, it's a talent that you have, and you must use it or you will lose it. And you will pass from this world without ever having left a mark. You have a duty to use that ability, that talent. You have a duty to tell your stories because only you can tell them. They're your stories. You're not a writer. You're a storyteller. You're not a journalist. You're a storyteller. There is magic to stories. It's the most powerful, profound magic ever conceived by man. You have a duty, an obligation to harness that talent and put it to use. You have a duty to tell your stories because only you can tell them. I can't tell them for you. Nobody else can tell your stories for you. But here's the problem. There is a magic to storytelling, but nobody ever taught you how the magic works. You've experienced it, but you haven't been able to pull back the, the covers, the blinds, and, 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 and look behind the curtain to see how it actually works. You've been the effect of stories. You've read stories that have shocked you, that have inspired you, that have 
censure life off in a different course like Geronimo did for me. It sent my life off on another tangent. Without Mrs. Greiner and without Geronimo, I'd be long dead. Run over, roadkill of life. She changed my life because she believed in there. But that book, Geronimo, I don't even know who wrote it. I don't even know when it was written, but it changed my life. It sent my life on an entirely different trajectory. God bless Miss Graner. God bless the author of Geronimo. Because you know what? If he never wrote that book, I never would have been able to read it. If he never wrote that book, it never would have impacted my life. See, it was intriguing enough, inspiring enough, adventurous enough to hook my attention. And through reading that book, I learned how to read. And learning how to read changed everything. So don't confuse yourself. You're not simply a writer. That's almost a derogatory term. You're a storyteller. You're not a journalist. There's a magic to stories and storytelling. I want to teach you that magic because it will change your life and you then will change the lives of countless other Richards. God bless you. Thanks for listening.